What's going on everybody? It's your boy Spencer and today I'm giving you the updated deck profile. I was going to do this yesterday but I'm getting stuck at work so sorry about that. Um, one thing you'll notice probably about this deck profile is that the ratios are a little weird probably um, but when it comes to unique decks and everything like that you got to do some unique stuff and I've just been playing this over time and this is just the ratios that work best for me. I'm sure you guys will be able to take this and maybe do something different with it but um, yeah, th this is this is a good skeleton, I would say, at least for you guys to check out and, and kind of base your deck profile off of. In any case, uh, we're going to go first into Eldritch. I only run two of them, which is pretty nice. And I was kind of right, for the most part. I mean, about as right as you could be. In the maximum gold set, Eldritch is like $13 last time I checked. Now, I could see that going up, so maybe it would be a nice time to buy it. But they also look really good. I love the gold rares, as you guys could probably tell in that video. Um, so I would love to uh, get a couple of these for sure run two adius and the reason honestly you could probably run three i just like this spot removal effect and it's kind of searchable too uh with ether but anyways uh the reason i like adius is because he is a zombie which can be used to tribute uh for a golden land forever kind of specific and also if you have an eldritch on the board you can actually just summon it from the deck which is interesting uh, not that it would be like too good to summon from the deck but hey if you need another body to end the game that's one of the ways to do it I do run the Caius, it's good to, to banish potentially two cards, which is searchable through Ether, um, which I run two of, and here I have Vanity's Ruler, always good to have one of, uh, you're not going to, it's not going to be your main strategy, but um, it, it is nice to have in the deck for sure. Uh, next I do run the Mythical Beast, and I know this is, uh, this could honestly just be Dark Magician for sure. Um, I just like it because of the potential spell removal, but if it does get uh, destroyed in any kind of way, it will go to the extra deck. So it's, it's a big risk, but potentially negate, which is nice. Uh, the, I run the I, the star, yeah, I always want to stay, the luminous lunar dragon, we'll just call it. Um, it's good, uh, rem I guess, kind of removal during your opponent's turn, very unique. It's something that monarchs don't do very well. Uh, so if, it was, uh, if you did control this tribute summon monster and... Uh, you also had some Eldritch stuff behind you. Like, that's pretty good in terms of disruption during your opponent's turn. Uh, I do run the three Magician Souls, so unfortunately this is not budget at all. Um, you can definitely change this out for other things. You probably add more Eldritch monsters or something like that. Uh, it's unfortunate that this hasn't gotten a reprint yet. I don't know what they're waiting for. I'm probably going to be doing another Cards That Desperately Need a Reprint video soon, and this will be on there, so sneak peek. Uh, the three Pantheism, that's obviously what you're going to have always. The one tenacity, which is good if it's searchable. Uh, the reason I do run one tenacity and not three domain, which I'll talk about in a second, is uh, sometimes you need that flex spot. So what you'll end up doing is if you really do want domain, you'll just add all three of these, assuming you have one of these in your hand, and then you'll search the other one. But maybe you need a maybe you need a monarch storm forth for removal and stuff like that, because that's like one of the this is one of the best ways of removal. Your opponent can't well if you if this effect goes off, your opponent can't respond to them getting you getting rid of their monsters because you're tributing it. Um, so that's why I do that. I do run an upstart goblin. Uh, it's just sometimes you just don't need extra copies of all this stuff, so you got to hope that you draw another one. I know it's a little janky, but it is technically makes it a 39 card deck, which is better. I do run the three dragonoid generators. I love these very much. I think they're very good. Uh, the three cursed eldland, obviously, that's a must. Uh, the two domain, which I just talked about. The three scarlet sanguine is an absolute necessity. Uh, that goes along with two Conquistadors and two Hakeros. And to finish out uh, the Monarch traps here, it's the three Monarchs Erupt, the two Prime Monarchs, and um, the uh, Golden Land Forever. I know this isn't really a popular card in all Elvish decks, but in this case you really do need it to. Especially if your opponent has Spell and Trap removal and you have this on the field, you'll definitely want to have some sort of negate for that. Plus it's a non-negate, it's really good. I don't know, I like the card a lot, but it's good as one because it's searchable. Uh, but that's a deck profile. It's so simple, right? Because uh, there's no extra deck. Uh, it's, it's just unfortunate. Really, the, the most expensive card now is the Magician's Soul. So maybe I'll end up doing a budget deck profile for this. And actually, that's a great segue into this. Um, I just want to let everyone know that I did open up a PayPal account for the channel. And literally, the only thing that the money will be used for is buying cards so I can show you guys live duels, live deck profiles. And most likely, I would love to just do budget. I'll show you the very expensive versions and then I'll show you in real life, I'll show you the budget version that you could most likely take to locals because it's much more affordable. Um, so I'll have that in the description down below, like how you can find that PayPal account. 
anything you guys give is welcome no pressure obviously <laughs> just if you want to support the channel and you just want to it just goes towards making more Yu-Gi-Oh content nothing else I will use the money for nothing if you guys want me to post receipts on my Twitter or something like that I'd be much more than happy I'm almost gonna exclusively buy from TCG player and uh, maybe Eldritch would be a good first start I would definitely up it the since I'm not gonna be buying magician souls I just I don't want to and I can't afford it really and I wouldn't expect the community to like crowdfund for Magician Souls it's so stupid it's just a too expensive card in my opinion um, I would you know I'll, I'll get creative with it and I'll find a way to make it budget so that would definitely be the first project and again anything you guys can give would be really appreciated and it goes towards making the channel better but no, what I don't normally do is show replays with this but since I only have a few um, I thought I'd go ahead and just show it to you um, actually I'll probably just throw you I'll show you two. I, I'm going to save some of them for Fresh Start Friday, and then we'll go from there. The first one I'll show you is actually really fun. It was a tag team match, and I don't show those too much. So let's see what we have going on here. Um, I think I displayed pretty well. I was actually the last to go, which you'd think would be the worst for Monarchs, but I ended up setting up pretty decently and kind of being the centerpiece of the duel. And I'm sorry if anybody who was in this match actually um, sees this because they were trying to talk to me, but I was... I'm being serious. I was eating an orange, so <laughs> I was I couldn't respond back, and then finally someone had said nice deck, and I had a chance to respond. So uh, pretty cool. My opponent here is playing Attic Nisters. I would love to check this out sometime, although I really just haven't heard anything good about it. It just has nothing going for it going first. It's just it's a very responsive type of deck. Still pretty cool. This guy was able to do something like this. Passing the Bureau, that's a, it's almost full combo, I would say. It'd be cool if he was able to complete an extra link, although I don't think he does. I feel like that would have been, that should have been the goal, though. For sure. So I don't think this is, I mean, he can't, he can use one less zone, and it is hard to, it can be hard to uh, get rid of it, so... Um, this guy's playing Gladiator Beast, another deck that I was curious to check out. I just didn't do exactly what I thought it did, unfortunately. So, I, I don't know. I, I kind of lost interest in Gladiator Beast, but if there was enough community interest, I would for sure do that. I like this duel because I think these are all decks that I have like just not featured at all. Gladiator Beast would be able to do a lot. It would be cool to see some more Gladiator Beast support, actually. It seems very pop reliant. I don't know. I feel like the fusion monsters themselves don't do too much. But maybe I'm wrong. I'm just not familiar enough with it. So finally, I'm able to get going here. Definitely the idea is if I can domain lock our, the opponent, you know, I'm in, the, I'm in a pretty good shape. And that's where the one tenacity comes into play here. Uh, since I did use the Monarchs, I'm going to get rid of one of his fusion monsters. The one specifically that was uh, tough. Uh, he did have the one card, I guess that's really good in this sense, and that's a uh, uh, compulsory evacuation, a little bit of a throwback. But still, um, we were able to clear his board, so I definitely had a good turn one setup without a doubt. I do have the Sanguine on board, and now I have a Conquistador. So anything, any true threats are going to be knocked out, <laughs> unless he has Regeki. <laughs> There's so many interesting things going on. So he uses Fossil Fusion here, and this is the Skull King, which I did get in that uh, video. So maybe I'll try to make a uh, a Fossil deck or something like that. He ends up going for an Avermax. Uh, that was really cool. I think uh, AI Fusion lets you use your opponent's monsters, which is great form of removal. And then he can start using my stuff, right? Like, it's not... Uh, it's not it's actually not bad at tag teams unless your opponent really needs to go in the extra deck but technically i think you can because uh tag teams are a little hard because i don't think they're actually sanctioned so there's no specific rules from what i understand but i would imagine since like we control a a tribute summon monster if i would have put domain on the floor then he could go into his extra deck because he did tech and control it with me although this says you have to have no cards in your extra deck i don't know in any case, the fact that I'm able to take control of this duel, I mean, I am playing against two opponents, but if neither of me, if neither of them were able to go into the extra deck, then then it's over, basically. <laughs> That's how powerful this deck can be, along with I now have a negate and a Hakero, and that negate can tribute off this uh, Erebus, which is really cool, too. I'm going to get two searches off of that. They're both going to be... Star um, 
you know, uh, Scarlet Sanguine, but still, I'm able to thin my deck out and get the more important stuff like the Elder Spells and Traps. And yeah, I do have, since I do have the Elixir, can just summon the Erebus from the deck. And being that's the end of the turn, we're just going to be able to go for games. So that was a really cool um, little go there. Uh, so I'll leave it off with that so you guys can see the potential of just any given matchup. That is probably the best example of any given uh, deck that you can play against. And uh, yeah, I would love to take this to locals and everything like that if they ever do open again. I did find out that um, my store close to me, we play games. They are a Konami sanctioned place. I forget what the actual charm for it is. Uh, so they don't, if they get caught doing locals before Konami comes back, they could lose their title. Um, I think it's called OTS. So that's why I haven't had locals, and that's why some people have, because they're not sanctioned by Konami. Um, but yeah, that's going to do it for today's deck profile, guys. Thank you so much for uh, sticking by, and I uh, hope you really enjoyed, and I hope you have an absolutely wonderful night.